I highly recommend if you could be happy doing anything else in the world, do it. It's probably going to be easier. I'm in the real world now. I'm working a gig. Costuming, scenic, lighting, sound. We're painting a, a beautiful portrait. Today we're going to check out a professional summer theater founded in 1974 that brings UVA students, staff, and faculty together to work alongside professional artists and community members. Join us as we catch up with Jenny Wales, actor, educator, and Heritage Theater Festival artistic director. Come on. Here we go. Five, six, five, six, seven, eight. Second week, more advanced than we have to be. Be a sports car, ice cream cone. For me, it was always a dream. Charlottesville has meant so much to me, and the university was really where uh, I was challenged to shape who I was as an artist, who I was as a human. And so when this job came up, it was... Um, it was one of those once in a lifetime opportunities because it was more than just a job. It was an opportunity for me to give back to the community that's given me so much. And my dad is an alum of the University of Virginia and I am an alum of the University of Virginia. So Charlottesville and, and this university mean so much to me. So I'm hoping that I can incorporate and use that as fuel for moving the theater forward. What are you most excited to bring to the role of artistic director? One thing I was really focused on in my job at UNC Chapel Hill was finding those intersections between the work we produce on our stage and the work that's going on in classrooms, around grounds, and also in our community. So that's something that's really um, exciting to me is where can we find those intersections and uh, bolster those relationships? How and you're not talking just about theater classes. No. You're talking about every no, class. No, I'm, I'm talking about every class. I mean, I right. think that you know we use physics, we use math, we use science every day in the work that we're creating. And so finding yeah. those intersections is something that really it, it excites me. Yeah, and you, and you serve as a professor here. I do, I do. I serve as a professor here during the academic year while planning for Heritage and then running Heritage in the summer. So I am, uh, I love working with students and I'm grateful every day to have that exchange um, with our students here. You did something this season that was really sort of a first in going out and holding auditions. Yeah, around, around yes, the country. We, we did, we did. You know, Charlottesville knows uh, the extraordinary work that's happening here at Heritage, and uh, something I'm really focused on is ensuring that everyone knows uh, the extraordinary work that, that we're doing here in Charlottesville. So we held auditions in Charlottesville. Right. Um, in for, Washington, for a course line, For a course right? line. Okay. For a course line, we held auditions in Charlottesville, in Washington, D.C., and in New York City. And we saw over 400 actors, I believe. It was over 300 in one day in New York. And some of them had gotten there at 5.30 that morning. So that's oh when we goodness. knew um, definitively that Heritage is celebrated in the community, in our theatrical community, and it was thrilling to have that many actors uh, come and audition for us. Well, and also how sort of the irony of it that it, it basically was a chorus line. It was. It, it was, was a story. chorus line. So we would bring in about 35 women at a time um, to do a dance call. We did a dance call first, much like a chorus line. And definitely by the, you know, sixth group of 35 uh, dancer actors coming in, it felt like a chorus line. It felt like Matt and I were in a chorus line making decisions really quickly. And um, you have a lot of empathy for the journey that artists put themselves on the line for. Right. To put yourself out there for such right. a short amount of time and you get the job or you don't get the job. So that music slows down and they mark it slower dull. You're one of 300 five foot half an inch girls in the room wearing a red t-shirt, but you just have to have hope that there's something special that'll set you apart that day. And if it doesn't set you apart that day, then you get the rest of the day off and you can go get yourself an ice cream. So I'm gonna be playing Zeppo, or uh, Robert Jameson is the character's name. Um, working with Frank Ferrente, who's a director and actor, and uh, sort of the, the Groucho Marx guy in the entire world, um, which is just so exciting to learn from someone with that kind of experience and uh, that kind of skill. Charlottesville has always made great art and something that I wanted to do was try to spread that some and show, you know, New York what amazing art was going on in Charlottesville and the Heritage Theatre Festival. 
You and Matt have history. You met at UVA. Talk we, about that. We did. So Matt Steffens, the director choreographer of A Chorus Line, and I met our first week of our first year here at the University of Virginia. And we've worked together when we were students here at UVA. And then after we left and graduated, we've collaborated multiple times in our careers artistically. And yet this is the first time that we've been able to collaborate on a project here in Charlottesville, back at the university, oh. where it all began. So it's, it's pretty special for both of us. And that's what's so exciting, is that you have professional artists who are coming to Charlottesville and working here at the festival. Talk about how that must feel for other artists who are here, community members, students who are working side by side with them. It's a really thrilling thing. Everyone's learning from one yeah. another, and I think that, um, the, the people who join us in the summer bring something to Charlottesville that we wouldn't have otherwise. And the same goes for uh, the people here who live and work in Charlottesville right. to intersect with those professionals. Yeah. They're giving something specific as well. So it's a, it's a really beautiful combination. And I, and I love watching everyone intersect and work together. Well, and then how do you, how many shows do you do a season and how do you go about choosing which shows you do? Yeah, so we usually do about four shows a season. And choosing shows is something that um, is very important to me. There needs to be an intentionality um, mm -hmm. when you're choosing work. So he went, yes, I went. Yes, he yes, went. went. So I'm going to be some kindergarten teacher. Imagine me, this kindergarten teacher. No, A Course Line was revolutionary in 1975. It was groundbreaking. It was a documentary piece of theater. These were actual stories of actual dancers uh, on the line. And I think what's beautiful about this piece is that no matter where you are in your life, mm -hmm. um, you can identify with someone and their story on the line. So mm -hmm. there's a universality in the story. It's also directly addressing issues of racism, misogyny, homophobia, things we're still struggling with today. Right, and I think right. it, it provides um, an entry point uh, for our audiences to have that combination of being entertained and challenged at the same time. What's, what's beautiful about theater is that you're sharing experiences with people um, and, you're, and you're really building something together in a super compressed amount of time so you get to know, work with and love these people, you know, in, in a matter of weeks. It's nice to be in a city where people stop and say hello to you or ask you how your day is when they're complete strangers. It's a very tight-knit, warm, welcoming community. And for me, it's been great just because I've been reminded of a bunch of things I love about the art and the craft that I had probably forgotten by being in the city so long. The Drama Education Building is a sort of a, an odd place in that it has to create an education environment for students during our academic year. But during the Heritage Theater Festival, we open up all three theaters. We can have a really high quality professional experience. And then during the school year, have a great environment for students. You know, for two hours, a group of people that might not ever come together ever again, go on a collective experience together. And that's the joy of theater. This theater has such great history. So there's a part of you I know that wants to continue tradition, but at the same time, move it in your own direction. Mm -hmm. So how do, you, how do you do that? I think it's a balance. Right. Um, I'm a different artist and a different person than anyone who has been here before, and that will influence the decisions that I make and um, my programming and, and, and how we move things forward. But it's, it's a tricky thing. There's been a lot of talk about change, and change for me is um, you don't a difficult, use that I don't word. use that word. What is your word? It's a difficult world. I like to use shift. Shift. I it's like shift. to use shift because yeah. there are things that I think when people hear change, it's, um, it's shocking. It's overwhelming. And it's not that I am moving the theater in, in a radical direction in a different way that doesn't honor what it's been. I'm trying to take my skill set and my life experience and bring that to where Heritage is now. And with such a appreciation of the school and Heritage yes. and the community, you yes. have that. I do, I do. And so what does it take to run a professional theater? I mean, you tell us about <laughs> your team, because you have, you have a huge team, you have to have a team. First of all, 
no one does it alone. <laughs> I mean, it is an incredible team. Everyone is working at the top of their um, ability and is pulling really long hours and has bought into the idea that what we do is making an impact. So I think to run a theater, you need patience mm -hmm. and generosity and flexibility and uh, a sense of humor. One and two and three and four, step onto the left. We're all lucky in this building to produce theater and to create art that we trust has an impact not only on ourselves, but more importantly on our community. And the hours are long and things can get stressful as in any job. And so I do think that it's really important that we're all aware of um, how lucky we are to do what we do and to have that sense of humor kind of guiding us through those moments when y you may not feel like you want to have that sense of humor. <laughs> well, and, and it, it's not an easy life theater and acting, it's just, it's not. So why do you do it? Why do you pull the long hours? I've made this my world because I believe that uh, theater has the ability to expand our understanding of our shared humanity. And it is, it's a very specific a life, you know, to choose and career to choose, but I believe strongly that the work that we're doing uh, makes a difference. There's something that's singular about being in a theater or being in a concert hall. There's something about the arts that um, is transformative. I've learned that my worst days as an actor are better than my best days doing anything else. I'm going into this life knowing that it is not a life of consistent employment, but I would rather have spotty short-term jobs doing exactly what I want to be doing on this earth versus a long-term job of something that doesn't fit my heart. I know that I always try to challenge myself in the way that I approach a piece and challenge my cast and challenge the audiences and maybe the piece that we're working on can present them a different view of the world and I think in the end that brings us all together. You are good night.